yeah so good evening everyone we are going good to evening. start uh, the first episode of our uh, talk show the prodigy talks and uh, as we all know that we uh, people were working upon it together and the theme for the uh, episode 1 uh, what we all decided is challenges and opportunities which uh, we people see ahead especially with respect to fmcg and retail sector and we all are aware that what covid 19 has done to uh, all of us as consumers as well as to all of us as the marketeers as the uh, ceos marketing directors financial officers of the leading organizations so with that i take this opportunity to uh, welcome the moderator for the session mr shreyas nayak and uh, from this point onwards i will uh, request mr nayak to please take the proceedings of the session forward over to you mr nayak um namaste everyone my name is shreyas nayak i am your host today uh, i hope all of you are safe and sound during this pandemic corona has turned catastrophic not only to human life but also to the economy of india india saw a slow down in customer consumption patterns before covid which resulted in stress on our economy yet today we stand at much crucial juncture where we our economy could turn for worse or better a platform where we shall today discuss the position of fmcg and retail in the post covid india a panel today includes representatives from national and international companies mr durga shrikant representing mr rs sodi managing director at amul ms florence mishra representing mr sanjeev mehta managing director at achieval mr suresh farta representing mr kishor biyani ceo future groups mr sai akil representing karl macmillan ceo walmart and mr shubham kumar just we also welcome dr vaishali agarwal as our studio audience i welcome all of you so let's get to our first question for today i would like to address mr shrikant mr shrikant yes yes please i would like to know you and mr also mr suresh patta from uh, retail and uh, as well as from fmcg sector a two different perspective so a question for today is since the lockdown has opened it, uh, it was found that sales of immunity boosting products has increased by 20 to 40 percent heightened awareness on online platforms such as instagram tiktok and whatsapp is leading to health consumption mindset companies such as marico yardley dabber have already launched products with respect to this movement in the market so my first question based on this is to mr suresh fatta is uh, do you feel retail brands must immediately start working on this trend or should it wait to see if the sim it's simply a cyclic change such that the market will settle down and go to its previous state uh, well i think that as a retail we should adapt to the change uh, as an impact of the pandemic uh, covid 19 the world has world is changing so as the consumer needs and consumer behavior is also changing so i think uh, we should also change uh, we cannot afford to wait like we should research and develop the value the new value for the new kind of product that people want so uh, i think we should change and talking about the cyclicity uh, we i think we all can agree that uh, market functions in some cyclic patterns it follows some cyclic patterns so uh, the real question is whether the cycle which has been created by this pandemic which is been created like the trend is following so whether this uh, cycle is a long term cycle or like it's a short cycle so short cycle could be of maybe one year to two years or long cycle could be of a decade also so uh, we need to think uh, that whether it's a long term cycle or short term cycle so in my opinion it's a long term cycle it's a long cycle so we should uh, like focus on creating the new values for the new needs of the customer and even if sir, it's a short cycle uh, let me say uh, uh, okay uh, so what i wanted to know is uh, if you consider this as a long term uh, cycle 
Uh, do you consider getting into your own private label ranges of products? Yes. See, uh, currently we are in uh, various brands like HUL is also like we are also selling HUL. So I believe uh, we have our private label brands, but like we are selling our private label product. But I think there is a huge scope for our uh, private brand as well. So we are like trying to get in the brand also. All right, Mr. Shrikan. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, as a leader in in dairy industry and representing FMCG sector, what do you say to this uh, long term cyclic, or is it a short term cyclic effect that you are seeing right now? Well, uh, uh, you know, starting uh, from the perspective uh, in the terms of Bull uh, as a company. Uh, if you talk about the trends, few trends, so they will maximum the trends might uh, start with the three months or the end of the one year or like that. But few trends uh, they will they will leave an impact which which last longer on the consumers uh, consumer forever. For an example, even if you uh, uh, check few crises which have like it could be a, of um, uh, one happened in China or uh, in the SARS SARS crisis of one when the crisis has been dead the. type of consumer behavior that been started which which never uh, look back again so the consumer behavior the way the products or purchasing they went into purchasing new products etc it has been continued so i don't think it is something which is a uh, you know very small or uh, uh, cyclic trend it, it, it will be continued for the long way next question is to mr shubham jaiswal yes Mm-hmm. can this health awareness among people result in either increase or shrinkage of the average basket size of an indian consumer uh see uh just we can see that uh, since we are in lockdown phase 50% of our sales are gradually decreased by during this lockdown phase only and as a result in we are in lockdown and we know that that we know that there is a significant slow down in the economy so our hands are we started putting our hands constricted so that we we spend only less we spend only on a particular amount of money which is required for us which the stuff which is required for us so i think uh, it will be reduce creating a temporary impact on our growth forecast but as well as uh, once the, this lockdown phase and all is lifted again it will be going in a cyclic run again so i think it will not uh, it's just temporary and it will not cause cause any great harm in the future again it's a coming year to come Uh, Mr. Suresh Patta, yes. how would you respond uh, uh, to the increase or shrinkage of basket size with respect to inventory issues or merchandising issues? Uh, see, if we talk about um, my businesses, I'm into food, apparel, and home. So, if we talk about food, that is like particularly in FMCG. If we talk about FMCG, so there are two kind of products that can be classified in. Uh, necessity product or non necessity product so i want to see uh, that the basket size has been reduced but i would say that basket size has been changed so uh, in the basket the share of necessity good has been increased whereas uh, the non necessity much more buying in, like buying pattern is going towards uh, buying health products buying uh, immunity boosters buying sanitizers whereas uh, other like if you talk about garments so like people are not at all buying it so that's what i think about the basket size and basket shares so but uh, how do you deal with the inventory issue or the merchandising see, issue see uh, talking about inventory so i think a lot of uh, assortment is required in the industry and uh, we uh, we have to arrange our inventory in such a way that uh, like people when enter into the shop so like they can uh, maintain enough of uh, they can get what they want like uh, currently i'm focusing on the uh, inventory like which are necessary products and like assortment of these uh, inventory should be done in a way that yes like people can buy it without any uh, hurdle so uh, i would also suggest for the same for the like unorganized retail they should also focus on it so like inventory is uh, like not only like uh, keeping the inventory but also like warehousing is also a big problem because uh, like stock of uh, the product which is which come under non necessity is moving very slow 
so it is like piling up our cost and like we are short on the head so like we need to do something for that mr akhil yes uh mr akhil what do you feel uh, about inventory issues and merchandising issues as a representative of walmart do you feel also affect your uh, back end supply uh, supply chain front end supply chain yes first of all who what a crew uh, good evening guys uh, so answering to your question i think uh, the supply chain is a big problem uh, we have the products available but how to reach those products to the end consumers is the task is a difficult task we are facing but i think walmart has successfully doing this uh, since in the lockdown itself also because we found the way in us so to how to send our products to our cust- customers because we are the uh, most trusted retailer uh, and our objectives has changed from 2018 from 2020 in 2018 we wanted to be the most trusted retailer uh, as we always wanted to be but the main objectives has been changed like uh, we want our supply chain we want our customers to be safe so we are finding a ways to as people are fighting different ways to co- combat the virus um, as walmart we are also doing a great job to do that and how we are doing it we are doing it with like uh, you are aware that in us the testing has been done in like in m- many of the walmart stores um, because we got a call from white house that uh, they asked us for to uh, turn our walmart stores as a testing center so we have to agree because we we value our customers so we are almost is every time doing this uh, from the past 100 from past years uh, so we continue to do this we are finding the ways uh, right now uh, the people are ordering uh, from the e-commerce websites we are happy that they are ordering and we always wanted their well being so we continue to do that yes uh, mr shrikant yes sir uh has yeah. been catering to the health drink segment for a long time and it has been seen doing a steady business in india though this was an initially a japanese company which is now french owned um how do you feel uh that this company which is already looking at to increase its penetration in india during the covid crisis how do you feel that the awareness among people will attract more global companies to flood indian market with healthy alternatives and if it does how will it affect the domestic players just like uh, before we talk about the uh, yakob and uh, company so i just want to uh, inform uh, how big this health industry sector in india so this is one such uh, uh, segment which is having almost 6500 crores revenue capacity and uh, and as well it is growing with the percentage of 12% annually but uh, unfortunately one interesting thing over here is like if you see health health drinks category in every other country there will be so many categories under health category uh, drinks like it could about uh, some other energy drinks or nutrition drinks or antioxidant drink or uh, probiotic drinks etc but somewhere with the for example in the india if you saw the first health drink that ever came to india was harlicks again this uh, health drink which is some belongs to the malt based health drink so that was a came uh, it came almost 65 years back so because of that thing most of the indian consumer mindset or indian consumers has been habituated in a way as a health drink it is a health drink most of their mindset is going to the perspective of market health drinks you can take it like harlicks or bone vita kaplan protein x like whatever so these things are the most of the malt based drinks but uh, yeah somewhere the one which you said like yeah could the japanese drink it is something which falls under probiotic drinks and uh, the one of the um, unique value proportion of the drink is it helps to uh, uh, it helps to uh, uh, you know work on the bacteria it uh, it helps the people to digest uh, for the better digestion and some gastric problems so it is somewhere uh, belongs to that segment and uh, definitely if you see the present situation we can see this in two ways if foreign train, foreign companies or the foreign health drinks were coming into india uh, definitely they will try their like uh, they will try their like in the some other segment other way, other than malt based drinks why does almost like gsk is uh, capturing 55 to 56% of the market share 
so there are very less chances if any foreign companies came with came in the health drinks like with the malt drinks so maybe come definitely try their like in the, in the form of some other energy forms of drinks but another thing we have to look is there are some another energy drinks even in the india also where the uh, less, uh, where only 5% of consumption we are able to see the uh, other health drinks other than malt based drinks so again it is a challenge for companies you know if you introduce over here how much we are able to penetrate in the present market definitely consumer will see the products which are very much familiar to them it is the majority of the people i am talking about so majority of the people what they will said this is thing about health concept to the goodest and i think this is some i know from many years let me go with this thing why should i try why should i try this something new that to with the respect of my health that they are ready to take that challenge so that is another thing and uh, so i want to be there from the market from i would like to follow you up on yes, this yes 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 There are many products uh, which have been seeing in the European market and the US market that are mainly incorporated with uh, antioxidants. I was not uh, able to yes, yes. repeat the question once. I was saying, sir, that there are many um, products in markets such as European markets and the US markets, and these products usually consist of uh, additional uh, value add-ons such as. you know nutraceuticals or uh, antioxidants omega 3 omega 6 fatty acids and these have been uh, really been welcomed by the consumer segments over there which obviously have been uh, more health cautious over the years but uh, this sudden change a healthy awareness a healthy lifestyle uh, awareness among indian consumers do you feel that india is ready for such products now and if so uh again let's come back to the first question so won't it be that the these foreign players will be more uh, uh, ready to capture this already required set market in india yes uh, definitely foreign markets will be uh, to come to the end with this uh, segment what you are talking about but one thing is there is lot of awareness to be increased on the remand segment so if a company came in india they have to start from the scratch so they can't directly uh, you know said uh, make product available in the market and they can't expect sales directly like that why because there are some other rules and regulations you know again comes into the scene uh, for example there are few products where you know a uh, company is not able to sell directly into the retail they supposed to take permission from the Uh, health say health department as well as and uh, doctor has to prefer those energy drink then only uh, the retailer or the uh, per, uh, uh, you know respective person able to sell that so some health regulation also differentiate from the other countries as well uh, i would like to take uh, definitely for this segment uh, this awareness has to be increased i would like to take an answer from mr suresh fatta based on this as a retail outlet how do you feel about uh, start on this health uh, consumption basis will you be more uh, prone to shelf your domestic products or foreign products i will let customer decide see uh, i'm just a seller i i don't produce these things uh, right now so i'm just a seller so i let customer decide i have like i have actual product as well i have amul's product as well and i see that the in today's uh, like world like uh, if we talk about yakul so we have uh, its competitor amul like amul is also producing uh, its probiotic plus c so uh, i let uh, customer decide so i have seen what that in the basket like of these products i have seen both uh, yakul and amul so i have seen the consumer who are buying uh, yakul more are like more aware of the probiotic thing they oh, buy, I, they want to buy a probiotic so they are buying uh, yakult whereas uh, talking about amul's probiotic plus tea people are consuming it as just a, another tea so i think uh, that companies in brands like they should promote their product more like a health uh, conscious thing like a healthy product not just like oh, a oh, very good drink your product so very good point uh, that is what i was trying to come as an yes. uh, if Indian consumers are more prone to buy Yakult as a yeah, healthy drink yeah, yeah. because uh, they are not that uh, they are not that aware 
of a more probiotic yes, seed. They yes. just consider the seed. Yes. So in in that matter, foreign products that are already established as a hygiene based product, as a health aware product that will give you rise immunity or uh, they are a healthy alternative for your day to day products that yes. you consume. So it be easy. And in that scenario, if uh, these products are more welcome or can be easily uh, resonated with the consum- con- consumer's demands. So will you then go for domestic products or the foreign products? I already answered that uh, I would let customer decide. Whatever customer want to buy, I will just sell that. So that's very simple for me. Like I'm a money guy. I will look for the money. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I would like to take this. Uh, the brands which communicate uh, the messages uh, of fact, uh, and give the consumers the light and the hope in this uncertainty will definitely have the advantage. It doesn't matter it's a, a international brand or domestic brand. Uh, yes, I agree that the international brand have the enjoy the revenues, but domestic uh, brands are at, are having the advantage of uh, the location where they're living. So who can communicate well and who can gain the consumers' uh, trust are going to uh, are have are going to have an edge. So. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, as a representative of FMCG, I would like to contribute something. Uh, if we we'll talk about Yakult, as we know, Yakult is a probiotic uh, milk, uh, fermented uh, milk drink. Uh, so it will help in digestion and uh, build immunity. So uh, before many before many years, it has been in the market, but uh, people have ignored it. But uh, in the in this situation where the people are more concerned about their health and uh, um, health and hygiene, when they think about any healthy drinks, the first thing comes to their mind is Yakult. So the question is why? Why the Yakult is the first which is comes to their mind? The main thing is might be they were not needed before. And mainly Yakult was successfully, yes, I agreed that this Yakult is successfully ignored by before, but, but it has consumed, uh, like it has uh, been consumed some mind share of the people. Like it has successfully created uh, some mind share in the customer mind. So which, which is very much important for the penetrate in the market. And if we'll talk about the domestic brand like uh, Amul, Amul have launched a probiotic dahi, but uh, still it has uh, um, people treats like Amul as a normal dahi. They they never thinks it is a uh, probiotic dahi or any uh, any other product. Uh, uh, still people are thinks that it is uh, such a no- normal cut. So uh, it is depend on the mind share of the consumer, and it, it's uh, almost depend on the what. A customer like to prefer. Uh, a very good point made by you. Uh, yes. Apart from the probiotic products, do you think that as a representative in FMCG and as a manufacturer of various healthcare products yourself and healthy health products, so what is your stand awareness among consumers looking for healthy alternatives? As in, how do you think it will affect HUL if more global players are attracted to Indian market? And do you think? that HUL uh, is ready or should launch new healthy products into the market? Yes, obviously, uh, we cannot say in this time that HUL is properly ready because in the recent survey, it has been seen that uh, um, FMCG market has been declined. It is a sub decline in FMCG market. But during this challenging time of COVID-19, uh, HUL uh, stands with the India and uh, have donated 100 crores for uh, for fight against the coronavirus. But it has also uh, uh, take some steps for the employee hygiene and the safety and the many other things. And also it has been uh, supporting the uh, medical uh, institutions and uh, uh, um, and many other isolation centers also. Um, <laughs> HUL, uh, yes. I would like to say one thing. HUL is not only the um, HUL has been produced many uh, healthy uh, product, not only for the health and also for the environment, like Domex and many other air purifier, air sprayer. 
uh, HOL will try to get many more products. Uh, I would like to say something uh, when you talk about HOL and your previous question that uh, whether the customer would like whether I will sell uh, Indian indigenous uh, brand more or the foreign brand. So first question like that arises whether uh, custom, what customer want to wear indigenous or foreign. And before that the question arises whether the customer is aware of the brand whether it is Indian or of foreign origin. Like uh, talk, talking about Ayush of the HUL man Ayush. So uh, Ayush like whether it is the like, subsidy company of the uh, HUL only but it seems more like of Indian origin because of its name. So the question is also that uh, whether the customer is aware of the brand is Indian or not. So that is also a thing to look at. Yes, and it is doesn't matter the product is Indian or international. It is only depends on the mindset of the people which will require the maximum to maximum mindset will, uh, of the people uh, that product will win the battle. Mr. Jaiswal? Yes. So, as an economist, what do you feel that if global players, more global players, that are attracted to the Indian market, how do you feel a uh, domestic market will be affected by it? Do you feel Indian domestic market is ready for a higher level of competition right now? Uh, see, uh, as recently PM, our PM announced that we should be the step dependent, this Atman River scheme. So, uh, in lieu of that, they have, he has also announced 20 lakh crores uh, as a fund for the young body entrepreneurs in our country. And also we can see that during this COVID situation, COVID-19 situation, uh, the person, we as an Indian, we only, only our self-Indian self-products have as a lot. Earlier we can see, uh, let us, I'm giving you some examples of that, that uh, earlier that PPE suit we have to transport from, uh, we have to uh, import from China, America and Japan at a higher price of, uh, I think more than uh, 250 per suit. But uh, during this COVID situation, uh, Indian, uh, we as a uh, young entrepreneurs of our India, Started preparing their own suit and now it's costing around it's costing around two point five rupees per suit, and in in one day we can prepare on more than two to two point five lakh suit. So we can see that the self uh, PM Modi is going on the right track of self and then this self in self uh, self sustainability uh, self Nirmal uh, Vano scheme is going to work a lot. And now coming to about the FDI FDI scheme that India is also on the other hand. India is also allowing the foreign markets to enter, enter to, our, to the Indian sector have a trade here, here. because uh, allowing them foreign FDI uh, allowing them the foreign investors in India will lead to the uh, will lead to the job options of the large number of people. As we know during this COVID situation, uh, all these are in lockdown situation, and we are going for uh, going for a harsh, uh, very vast uh, economic change, economic change. So uh, many of our uh, many of the companies are going to be likely to be going to cut down this uh, human human health, human jobs and many of them are going to be jobless. So other than being in the FDI norms and being in the foreign investors in India will lead to the job job of the different types of people and it will decrease our unemployment problem. And on the other hand, PM and all the steps uh, that are nirva scheme. And with that, uh, I think. Uh, we are going to boost our young entrepreneurs a lot. Uh, I have I have to ask something to uh, Mr. Jaiswal. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so you talk about FDI. Uh, so I would like to know, like, what kind of FDI, like, we are more into, like, uh, the direct investment in the form of a separate entity, or maybe in the form of mergers and acquisitions. Uh, see, uh, if you are uh, going for the separate separate entity. Uh, I think it, it won't be worth because in any at any cost you have you have to spend 15 percent of your income in India as a FDA norms current FDA norms at least you spend your 50 percent of your income. So if you are going to as a separate entity, uh, I think it won't be uh, beneficial for you as uh, as we as you know we are you are already in the decrease decrease of decrease of your sales. So it you want it is not going to affect on you. Uh, because of that, you can you can go for the merger and acquisition of other kind, others that you can have a collect collaboration approach with that, so that you can also invest and on the other end, different people will also invest and on the other end, you all are going to help to our country only. So I don't think it. Yes. Let's let's and go. This is 
Uh, yeah. Mr. Fatta will come back to you. Uh, Mr. Shrikan. Mr. Shrikan. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have seen that COVID has made government to tighten the FSCI policies. Every food and beverage manufacturers has to follow the necessary protocols as for sure now. Uh, what used to happen was in the food and beverage industry, there was a huge, huge unorganized sector. And uh, the norms were, were pretty uh, taken lenient in that particular sector, as we all know. So do you feel that the largely owned un unorganized sector will be affected by this? And if yes, how do the organized players plan to capture this market, this untapped market? Yes, uh, like most of the rules has been changed a lot because you know uh, to in, in the take care of the citizens' health and uh, so many things. And India is a kind of market where organizer say is having you know large share compared to the uh, organic sector. So there are few few uh, rules like if you talk about uh, uh, it would be about uh, providing hand sanitizer or the gloves or the mask. And other than this, uh, government also uh, made some rules of, like wherever you are placing the food, you, you are supposed to clean that area with a separate uh, chemical, which government has been ordered the issues. And also every, even if you talk, take uh, an example of any sweet shop in the roadside or the vegetable, they said that uh, like pulses, whatever, they said you have to uh, uh, fix them uh, like uh, best uh, from where it, uh, when it manufactured and best before this day. So everything has to be labeled. So these are the kind of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, rules or the new rules which came up uh, by the FSAI. Uh, so definitely, if you uh, if you talk about the impact or the impact on the unorganized sector, there will be an impact. Like there is no doubt on it. Why? Because uh, there is a few reasons which are uh, supporting organized sector over there. At least in once in a week, you know, in any any newspaper you saw, you are able to see there is one market or there is one shop and an organized sector got COVID. So definitely this scares the people, definitely this, this will impact. So, and uh, whereas if you see some any organized uh, like manufacturer or the retail shops, you are able to see people are having these gloves and you know, they're able to make their things in a very systematic way. So consumers definitely they will attract uh, to going over there compared to going to uh, shops or the local manufacturers. But again, uh, even in the uh, very beginning of the lockdown, uh, very few of the manufacturers able to take up these uh, uh, changes they're able to, but now everyone got habituated to these things. So they are also able to change the way they manufacture the products or uh, everything. They are able to understand the present situation. So definitely, for example, if you, if you took any unorganized sector, any product you took, and, and the consumers are able to see that it could be about the packing, the chain, they did, or the gloves, or whatever the small changes if they are doing and consumer able to see it, definitely consumer will feel that value that which is he is getting. So even if there is any price fluctu uh, fluctuation, one rupees or two rupees, I don't think so consumer will go uh, directly to the organized sector itself. Maybe in the present, maybe for the next two months or three months, uh, there will be an edge for the organized sector, but on the long run, uh, this unorganized sector will have its uh, own way. Uh, Ms. Mishra, Ms. Lawrence Mishra? Yes, yes. Ma'am, uh, what do you think as a uh, producer of many food, product, food products yourself, uh, actually is into production of salt, coffee, uh, tea powders, uh, how do you feel that uh, unorganized sectors uh, market will be beneficial for actual to be captured now? Can actual capture the markets of the unorganized sector or unorganized sector will remain unaffected by the new changes in FSCI policies? No, uh, in my opinion, HUL will able to catch the uh, unorganized sector as well because uh, nowadays people are uh, like uh, highly uh, motivated towards unorganized sector as the, as the uh, new challenges come up with the India. But, uh, but came up with the India, um, uh, many retail sectors uh, uh, many organized and uh, unorganized sectors are also affected. But HUL is trying to hit the bell uh, and uh, um, try to come up with uh, uh, many more new ideas to uh, overcome the situation and uh, will try to uh, and will keep trying. 
Ma'am, I would like to ask you is uh, to capture this unorganized market for an organized player. Will a first more advantage uh, immediate action with a nice good good strategy, or to wait and see how it, how things turn out will be a good strategy. No, first uh, uh, to start something. First, we have to analyze that how situation is going on. So first we have to analyze that uh, how all things are going on and uh, how the market is changing, and how the how it will impact the situation. So according to that we should make our strategy and we should move our step. Ma'am, uh, I would also like to ask you with uh, the human power that has been cut down now. Up to fifty percent, as per the government regulations, would this be a challenge to further penetrate or capture unorganized markets? Uh, yes, uh, as uh, uh, our honourable Chief Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, has recently announced that uh, um, uh, Atma Nirbhar India and uh, uh, around twenty lakhs crore of uh, uh, funds have been released to the. Uh, sectors to the different sectors. So uh, uh, and many labors were come to the uh, come to their home, but, but they are facing many problems. So they uh, they have been uh, promised by the government that they will be uh, they uh, they will get some job in their hometown. But uh, obviously that uh, from where they were living, so that uh, company will be affected. But uh, the the main thing is now is will they able to get their uh, will they really able to get their job? So it will obviously a challenge for India. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Fatta, we are back to you. Yes. Just Suresh Fatta. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So uh, this holds good for retail industry as well, as uh, people no longer prefer to be in crowded places. Uh, people prefer not to go in uh, local mom and pop shops where they might might end up, you know, breaking the social uh, distancing norm, where they are at a risk for, for from getting coronavirus. In such a scenario, there seems to be a gap, a new gap that has been formed in the market where. Uh, Organized players, organized retailers such as uh, USL can come into picture. How do you propose? Do you think it is a right time or right uh, way to get into? Uh, see, like yeah, what you are saying is right. Like people are now afraid to go into the public places, uh, like crowded places. We are trying to do is like we have opened our ten thousand uh, digital stores. Well, I won't call it digital. I will call it like digital stores. So they are present physically, where you can, uh, like members can order digitally, and they can get their ration at their home. So we have opened a uh, ten thousand store, and we are focusing three thousand member per store. So like uh, there is a hassle-free uh, like delivery of the product, whatever they want, and uh, I think this can work. Like people will be safe. Uh, safety is very. Uh, we are promising them their safety, and uh, yes, this can work. Uh, Mr. Akhil, yes. Mr. Akhil, how would Walmart react to this uh, particular gap that has been created? Do you think Walmart is ready to re-enter brick and mortar stores in India? I think uh, I think yes, because like uh, we don't know when this pandemic has going to end, so we have to be prepared. Uh, uh, like we have to see. What what can we do to our cust uh, consumers or customers? Um, because as as my friend Kishore said, uh, we can do like there are physical stores like physical stores um, which they can order from online and they can take from the brick and mortar stores. Meanwhile, they can see what all uh, things they can need when they're entering into the physical stores. They can see what they can order and they can take take it take them away. Uh, and Walmart is uh, doing this. Uh, Doing this, they're thinking about they're thinking about what kind of things we can do to the, our our customers. Because um, and one more thing, I would like to add, like uh, like to add uh, that uh, that uh, Walmart 
is going to do what the Walmart can do, but it's up to the customers. This is a message I'm giving to everyone. Like one has to be prepared for the uh, prepared for the social distancing and the pandemics like this because they are, they have to prepare. Like uh, the government will do everything they can do, but one has to be prepared for the pandem pandemic. Yes. Very well said, sir. Uh, Miss Mishra. Yes. Ma'am, uh, do you think the organic products that were in demand for quite some time, do you think there will be a rise in this demand? Do you think green marketing and organic products will see a rise in demand post-COVID? Uh, well, uh, due to COVID, health crisis have long-term impact on the consumer demand. So also we can say uh, COVID-19 is rising the consumer awareness of the relationship between the nutrition and the health. Health crisis uh, will be an impact for the long term. As we take an example of uh, uh, China, in 2008, China had faced a uh, mel uh, melamine, uh, um, uh, a uh, melamine uh, candle which is a surge in uh, demand for organic baby food. So uh, according to uh, after that scandal, uh, China, uh, most of the form of the China moved towards the organic food. So uh, recently our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi has announced that, that uh, 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 has already said that we have to live with this virus because it is not a short term it will go long. So we have to uh, live for a long term So with this virus. So many people will adopt the, in this situation, many people has already ad adopt the health and hygiene and it will go for the long run. And uh, if I talk about the uh, green marketing, uh, if you know about Cantaro, you must have known about Cantaro. Cantaro have recently launched a, uh, a vegetable and fruit purifier, which will remove the excess chemical from the fruits and vegetables. So obviously it will put in a uh, great impact on the consumer. So organic food have already capturing the mind of the people and it will uh, last for long. Thank you. Very important point that you have made, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Srikant, Mr. Srikant? Uh, I think we're not. Yes. Hello? Yes. Uh, sir, do you think that uh, green marketing and organic products that were, yes. that was a very nice segment in India, do you think that post COVID it will see a certain rise? Yes, yes, like uh, according to the latest statistics, I would like to, uh, you know, convey one thing is like almost 25 to 80 percent of the organic sale has been increased only in the period of this uh, COVID. Once it COVID started all over the globe, uh, almost 25 to you know 70 percent or 80 percent of the sales has been rising. And if you talk about especially in uh, Indian organic product, uh, there are few companies well, very well known, uh, like uh, if you'd say about ICA Organic, uh, it is one of the, uh, you know, dominant uh, organic startup, which is doing pretty well. It, it, it got double its sales. And other than that, there is one more like naturally you or, uh, you know, uh, Organic Buddha. And these are the few starts. Uh, organic Buddha is especially from the bank with itself. It, it got almost 30% increase in its sale. And naturally you also uh, got 80% uh, of increase in the organic sales. And, um, and another hand, this organic sales has been from the last five, six years in the India, it is getting its momentum to be, to be honest. And uh, on the top of this, uh, this health, uh, COVID or uh, the situation definitely help the consumers to go and purchase these organic food more. But one, one uh, suggestion which I like to give, like somewhere, if you talk about organic foods or organic vegetables, people are thinking these are some kind of hi-fi products or these are the products which will be very much pricey. This, there is some meat is already there in the consumer. This is something which has to be removed. Once we got removed, definitely the sales are, you know, climb up like everything. Oh, and, oh, very, uh, very definitely point by you, Mr. Shrikan. Uh, I would like to follow you up on this question asking, uh, the organic products till now has been uh, catering to a niche segment. Though they have been uh, seeing a rise in demand, it has been catering to a niche segment and the prices have been premium too. 
do you think as as you said it is a right time for uh, market penetration pricing for penetration pricing such that if you are looking at uh, a higher uh, volume of consumption for organic products do you think organic product prices will be will fall definitely definitely says maybe one one answer for this uh, economy of sale uh, the economy of scales will be the one answer for this why because once consumer started increasing more organic product definitely the prices will come down so it, it will definitely help to raise the uh, you know um, sales or sales in the organic food also so uh, i would like to carry this question to mr akhil <clears throat> so uh, akhil? Uh, yes, so yes. i would like to ask you that as as a retailer uh, hmm. organic products give you a larger share of margin as hmm. a premium product so what would you prefer would the will the organic products as a with a larger margin will be a better option for the indian economy or will penetration pricing and reducing the prices for the organic products will be a better option for indian economy Uh, as far as the economy is concerned uh, i think it's better if it's keep it as a premium but uh, i think the people it's it's end of the day not we are going to decide it it's going to decide by the people as there is a surge rise in the organic products definitely the price is going to be reduced and we just sell the products what our customers need that's all mr jaswal Uh, yes just uh, what, what how do you feel about this uh, pricing strategies do you think india india needs uh, the organic product needs uh, uh, a certain penetration uh, penetration pricing or should it still be uh, kept at a premium pricing rate uh, see uh, this is the right place right time to go for the organic product i think shifting to our organic product is the right thing for this this covid era this they could they can they can be uh, put the uh, as you know that organic products are very high coming in india so just we have to on seeing the market conditions that their demand is going to increase we are going no we are we are for sure that their demand is going to increase so what we can do in this case that uh, we have to make a make a distinct pricing strategy for that so that uh, our we are such as Low income category, so so middle income category, and everyone is going to buy at different different uh, different uh, cost. So I think the price strategy should be normalized as compared to the other uh, the previous one. So the companies, I think, they should have to work on their pricing strategy as well as the uh, as well as the other sources uh, for their uh, regarding organic product. So this uh, very well carries our discussion to the next agenda for today. Is uh, consumerism and minimalism should go hand in hand an ideal approach by many marketers of course yet many tend to practically uh, tend towards either one of the two as we were previously discussing whether organic products should be premiumly uh, char- charged to the market or should it be pen- penetrated for pricing should be done as we were discussing that again uh, consumerism and minimalism are two different concepts or two opposite concepts yet an ideal situation is where there is an equilibrium among these two but usually we see that there is an inclination towards either one of these so in a post covid india what would be your views on the same on consumerism and minimalism and what be your views mr shubham jaiswal please uh see my views are that uh, we can see both should go both in hand in hand because we have to target uh, in india such a india such a big population country having diverse diverse population across all over the country uh, around 1.4 billion so it, on taking on on keeping in mind of, of everyone this is we should go hand in hand in respect to that uh, and as, as i said yesterday that uh, the pressing side we should be uh, distinct and normalized as Go for the name of organic. Uh, it was coming in a high, high price, and it should be, the other companies should be work on uh, their pricing strategies as compared to the previous one. So I think this will, uh, this will be the, uh, this will be the main best, best approach for this. Uh, so I would like to add one point. Uh, yes. 
so uh, consumerism what do we exactly know what is consumerism consumerism is the uh, thing that drives our economy so it uh, when consumer spends more uh, uh, spends more uh, behind a product on a product so that is called consumerism whether in other hand minimalism is uh, make us learn to how uh, survive with the less thing so uh, i am not telling that consumerism is uh, bad but uh, in this lockdown we and many other people have already learned that how we what we exactly need and on which product we should spend on money and and uh, on which product we should not so minimalism is about the spending money or uh, and minimalism is about the uh, uh, spending money on the right thing so we all must have seen in our home we have many products for which products we haven't touched uh, uh, touched from a long but it is only uh, capturing the space of our home and it is uh, only capturing the money so minimalism makes us learn to how to uh, invest on the right things and the right product and in on the other way if we talk about the uh, consumerism it other also it is um, drives our economy if uh, every every uh, person will maintain the minimalism the economy will not drive so i think consumerism and minimalism should go hand in hand mr shrikar as yes, a stress when it puts before uh, do you think uh, the minimalism will be the right approach for organic foods now yes sir is like uh, before uh, answering that like i just i just want to give full views on both the consumerism and uh, minimalism and i just want to give some new dimension uh, compared to what uh, my uh, colleagues or sorry my friends said so usually one simple question i like to ask is like when people buy more like usually if i have money i will buy more as simple as it is right if i have that uh, tendency and if i have money then definitely i will go to purchase and more and more products so if you if you see few uh, statistics like recently it is saying that uh, in 2011 the um, uh, the number of people who were under the poverty line is 268 million people were there under the poverty line in india and if you see recent statistics uh, 2019 it is telling almost 50 million estimated that by 2030 only 5 million or 4.5 million people will be there under the poverty line so this is something we can relate it for an example uh, uh, the one person who moved out from like poverty line then definitely the way wherever he is living from hut to he will come into the rental house or uh, another people who will be going to some better lifestyle uh, better lifestyle so by the changing of the lifestyle definitely you will start consuming more and more and more so this definitely helps uh, and this uh, will definitely help in the increase of consumerism and also another significant fact which is helping to this is that india is one of the youngest country which is having 64% of young people in the world right so definitely young people are another consumer who usually spends more money especially uh, in the apparel or fashion industry so then also we there is nothing called uh, you know the consumerism will come down or something like that and uh, on the other hand that what you are asking like minimalism etc in the present covid situation for example if you take a person who is uh, uh, you know going only strictly to the products whatever he required so if he is purchasing two deodorants for two months like one deodorant for one month another uh, two deodorants for two months here the that person will use one deodorant for two months like he will adjust that product and replacing that deodorant he will go for some health care or personal hygiene product so the minimalism may not decrease but it will stay over there only whereas consumerism with the a fact that uh, more more youth in the india and other fact that definitely consumerism will be increasing and on other hand the minimalism won't get reduced it will be stay over there uh carrying this forward to mr jaiswal ah uh, yes so uh, do you think there is an uneven distribution of wealth um, among different segments in, in in india and if so how do you feel uh, about consumerism and minimalism uh see before going to this um, i i want to go to uh, take you to some stats like i let's see uh, some of the stats 
that during the year financial uh, during the financial year 16 our gdp growth was 8% then followed by and uh, it was followed by 8.3% then in the 18 we starts declining in the uh, it starts uh, we are our gdp starts decline that from 6.6 and then it became 6.1% in 2020 it's 4.7 and estimated that During the year of during the end of this year, it's going to be minus one point one point two percent. There will be one minus one point nine percent. There will more be the decline in our economy in our GDP. So, uh, as far as it is concerned, I think it's not going to uh, it's going to create a heavy uh, devastation in our uh, economy. So, uh, I think it should be it should be a great deal. Uh, it should be a great deal for our uh, for the coming uh, for the, our. citizens of our country as well as we know there are some people are in bpl sector uh, bpl quota some people are minimal quota some people are highly low quota so the person who is in bpl quota is can't have the enough money to go for the uh, to go for the this higher range product so i think it's going to create something so uh, so do you feel uh, minimalism is the best approach or the consumerism is the best i feel that minimalism is the best approach for this Uh, my next question is to Mr. Suresh Patta. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, many of the retail industries uh, that deal in apparel, uh, fast food, fashion depend on consumerism. How will the newly found or uh, a realization among the people of roti, kapda, or makan that these things are enough will affect these industries? well i am into the three industries roti kapra and makan that is food apparel and homes so very right question uh well i think um uh, so one will agree to me that government is uh, focusing on the policies which promote consumerism like they are focusing on the policies which are promoting of more consumption okay to roti kapra makan they are also spending on other things as well that is non necessary things luxury things and apparels as well but yeah the the like share of the money is going more toward uh, necessity products so uh, i think that yes minimalism could exist and coexist with the consumerism so if you talk about the previous question that minimalism so i think it's not only about uh, spending less it's all, like it's not about spending less uh, it is also about buying and disposing like disposal part is of it is also important so i think when we talk about minimalism so shared economy could be one uh, the solution for the minimalism but uh, in the present scenario like covid 19 after covid 19 shareism like shared economy has declined because people do not want to share things with others like they don't know the apparel that uh, they are buying from uh, like any shared economy uh, maybe any platform so that could be uh, worn by other some other people the furniture that they are buying would be used by some other people and may carry some uh, viruses so uh, i think minimalism is in danger nowadays because it is also about disposing not only about buying so if uh, what one buys uh, and he want to dispose it so that other can buy it so this is what uh, minimalism generally promotes but uh, this is now become difficult as uh, people are not uh, buying like ready to share things people are afraid and uh, in talk, talking about uh, retail perspective so i think uh, retail should uh, focus on like new technologies so that people can uh, buy things without uh, like trying like in retail uh, people are not buying things because uh, they are afraid somebody would have tried it uh, earlier if we talk about uh, apparel so uh, like the new technology like augmented reality augmented reality could be used uh, to like promote the tangibility of the apparel so i think uh, we should uh, become more technical people like we should become more technical so that we could provide better solutions for the for our customers mr akhil yes i have to carry this question forward to you uh, as a retail giant how do you feel about the newly found uh, roti kapda or makan requirement or the satisfaction of these three uh, criteria in the post covid world in india 
um, as I said before, like uh, we are going to live with this virus, uh, hopefully for the last time. But uh, I I expect that it's going to be uh, taking a long time. So uh, so what I would say is like uh, yes, definitely the apparel, the many retailers wanted the consumerism uh, concept to be there, but people are. People are becoming more intelligent. People, I, I can use the word people. People are realizing that what they want. So people will definitely face the trade-offs what they wanted to choose. Uh, so definitely uh, the roti, kapdan, makan uh, are going to be the essentials. But uh, I, I would say like people will be people will become more specific. Like uh, as we can see, the Walmart sales are right uh, now are more of the hygienic products. Uh, they're taking the fish oil, COVID uh, fish oil, um, some hygienic organic products. Um, and talking about the organic products, organic products in 2018 having 100 uh, billion USD. And in a research, it showed like uh, in the next five years, it's going to be 150 USD after the post COVID. So it's a huge margin, right? It's like 50 uh, US billion dollars more. So I think uh, like, People are becoming uh, realizing actually realizing before they used to be a little ignorant, but these days they are becoming they are realizing what specifically they need. Uh, so I think people will definitely choose what they want, and hopefully we all will get away with get away with this virus soon. Thank you. So uh, an amazing perspective kept in front by you. Uh, yes. Completely goes in uh, contrast with something that we are seeing. Today. Yeah. Recently, since the lockdown of open, it was found uh, in China, the, in a particular mm. store, that uh, uh, people lined up for a long time to buy premium goods. And uh, the store saw a sale of $1.2 million on a single day. This was the highest per one day sales that they had ever achieved. And this happened after the COVID situation and after the lockdown opened. Uh, this this is something that uh, uh, experts are calling as revenge revenge buying. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I understood. I understood. Like I also know. I also familiar with the fact that uh, China and to what you said. But uh, I think that thing is going to happen for a little time. But eventually, people will become uh, people become more specific as the fear of the virus increases. So as uh, now the China is. Uh, completely recovered, uh, so that's why they may be doing this because uh, they are doing China is doing extremely well uh, because after the eighty six thousand something like that, the graph has been absolutely down. So they they may be founding uh, they may be they may found the way to how to combat the virus. I hope every uh, country in the world uh, can find a, a way to find the virus. So in every country can uh, do well and get away with the virus. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fata, I would like to carry this question to you. Do you think uh, India will see something similar in terms of revenge buying, where consumers will uh, indulge themselves in consumption, or uh, something known as the lipstick effect? See, uh, as uh, my friend Akhil have said, that uh, yes, that initially people could go for things like we as a marketer would also try to uh, like stock out our inventories uh, of like premium products. So uh, in that case, we would like provide some discount or we would like to like somehow reduce the inventory. So if we provide discounts and offers, so like people may come forward to buy the things. But uh, after like after that, just uh, time passes and like people won't uh, be much into the luxury products or they will more focus on necessary products. So it's a short term thing, only short term thing. Mr. Srikant. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in 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 terms of this uh, newly found uh, revenge buying, uh, it, it could very much be uh, a temporary process, as Mr. Akhil and Mr. Patta has pointed out. Do you feel that India will see something similar? What are your opinions? Uh, like, it is it is already started. Can say why because Amul already got some kind of those kind of sales in the uh, paneer, butter, and cheese. Like even before lockdown, we never had sales like this. But uh, because of the lockdown and so many reasons, so people are buying more like cheese or butter. We got sale more than 40% plus uh, increase in the sales is happening. 
but uh, on a totally contrast side i think it may not be the good thing why because uh, you we are able to see how many cases are increasing day by day so once people started you know uh, rushing to the shops and all the, so it it is better to have the social distance etc these things uh, always consumers have to keep keep those things into the mind why because at the end of the day nothing is more important to you uh, rather than your health so it may affect the market but uh, still the supermarkets you talk about or uh, the store showrooms whatever these these uh, the showroom staff or the management they are able to pop up with the rush and they are able to you know make sure the all the norms are following in the showroom then it will be definitely fine but other than it definitely people has to look into it before they go into the shops which are heavily rushed uh, could you could you say that uh, people's consumption or expenditure process has simply shifted from uh, a larger basket to a certain centric products and such that uh, consumerism is still going strong yet only to certain specific products yeah like uh, from uh, like vmart and dmart these uh, there are few products like dry fruit these uh, some products which are never sold or which are sold very less these dry fruits and these products have their significant increase in the sale and other than this even normal products also got a, a greater sale but here one more thing we have to understand is that there are few set of people who are really feared they are thinking maybe lockdown may come up maybe after one week we may hear from the government or someone lockdown might be extended again shops will because there is this set of fear also there in the people and this is also one another factor which is making people purchase to more and more compared to the normal level but uh, could this be that the product these products that we are mentioning such as uh, paneer and butter and dates and dry fruits these are the uh, need of the hour and with respect to the minimalistic approach they are just buying what they need so it still considers as a minimalism yeah definitely these things uh, you know uh, very much restricted uh, for for very uh, you know limited period of the time only i i don't think these things will again it will be continued for most of the time maybe for few uh, few products like health or hygiene factors it will be there but uh, uh another products i don't think so you know it will be it will be continued like this all. well on this note we would like to open the discussion to our audience dr agawal would you like to ask panel any questions yeah whether i will uh, like suggest we are having a lot of other uh, audiences in this studio also so i will uh, request the people and the audience to please feel free if they want to ask a question or uh, probably i will ask them to uh, like uh, they can put their questions in the chat box and which uh, mr nayak you can take and you can ask uh, uh, and shoot the question to the uh, respective uh, panelist uh, i just have uh, one uh, thought over here which i wanted to know that uh, when we uh, talk about uh, the perspectives of two different industry uh, leaders one representing uh, the indian retail baron uh, mr biryani from future group and then we also heard uh, the leader from walmart so i want to know that walmart who has recently invested so much money in the indian uh, e-commerce giant flipkart and with uh, the government talking about being self reliant and self reliant economy so uh, what does uh, the uh, being self reliant means to them because they have already committed a lot of resources to our economy so uh, what does this means to them so i i will like to know from uh, like uh, mr mr macmillan that what she has what he has to say yeah so it's true that it's true that we everyone know that we invested back uh, from flipkart uh, we are trying ways to how to cope up with the situation as uh, because uh, people look up to us as a retailer people look up to uh, walmart as a retailer so we are trying the ways uh, but uh, we wanted our cu- customers uh, to be safe that's the our primary motive uh, and we are figuring the ways how to do that uh, like like how the narendra modi has uh, modi the unbelievable leadership is showing uh, so we we are doing we are trying our love best how to cope up with the situation um, of in many different ways like the walmart in 
I'm talking about the US, uh, in Walmart uh, has been doing extremely well in this COVID situation, like our, our employees are standards and their health line officials in many of the American, uh, in American locations. Like we are truly, uh, we wanted to create our mark in India as well as we wanted to uh, employ many other people and uh, uh, in India and to help in Indians as well. I hope I answered your question, ma'am. Yep. Okay. So uh, there is another uh, there is another question which has been uh, like basically asked uh, by one of our uh, audiences attending the session today. So the question basically uh, I think uh, could be taken uh, up by uh, Mr. Sodi, uh, that is Mr. Durga Shrikan. So the question is that uh, since all these uh, daily projects like Amul cheese, packet milk, ice cream are uh, to be consumed on a regular basis and now the shops and restaurants are shut or we can say that distribution is very, very limitedly available and it has become a scarce a scarcity at the current time. So what uh, are the plans which uh, Amul has uh, made or what are the steps which Amul is taking to basically make these daily consumable items available to the end consumer. So uh, probably Mr. Sodi will like to answer this question. Yes, uh, actually that is one of the biggest problem. Yes, sure. So actually that is one of the biggest uh, problem even also uh, facing and especially if you talk about the, uh, you know, Eureka segment, which is uh, looking after the, uh, you know, uh, supply of uh, milk and other products to the, uh, which is not able to make any kind of sale in the present. So that is one segment, which is, which is there as said because of this lockdown. So if you talk about uh, how we are capable of, you know, uh, supply chain and these things, we, at present, we are able to take the farmers uh, who are uh, temporary farmers. So we are able to uh, make a kind of a contract with the uh, uh, farmers in the local areas. And from there, we are able to uh, supply the milk. But still, there is a few few uh, few states like Jharkhand where we used to sell almost uh, 13,000 liters of milk in one day but now it is we are able to sell only 7000 to 8000 milk only but uh, the supply chain uh, definitely we are uh, able to do it uh, uh, from the this perspective of contacting more into more local farmers and from there we are able to uh, sell these things and uh, on the another side even the ice creams also have been uh, decreased the sales uh, almost 80 percent so whatever the transportation things or the trucks which you use to you are the ice creams. Now we are using these things from the export of some other dairy fresh products like cheese and milk and these things. So whatever the products are the transport facilities which we are not able to use because of uh, decline in the sale. These uh, these uh, infrastructure we are using to make uh, we are using this infrastructure uh, for the items which are having very good sale. So it's just uh, looking for the alternatives and projecting the ideas in the best possible way you can do. We have a question here from Mr. Fatta. Mr. Fatta, yes, yeah. yes. the question here is, uh, usually people find uh, in apparel store that the space for going around is pretty much restricted. So what they want to know as an uh, retail outlet dealing in apparels, how will your group address this issue with respect to social distancing? See, uh, social distancing is very important nowadays and uh, we already are trying to like uh, make such a layout where like people can walk easily and uh, like we are sorting, are sorting the product in a way that people can like wash the product easily and also like we are uh, having some expenditure on technology that is augmented reality and similar other technologies which can uh, provide a interface where people can try so uh, not in a trial like not like uh, actually literally trying it, but they can feel the comfort of trying the product uh, digitally with the help of technology. So this is how we can uh, like manage the problem of social distancing. So uh, we have another question for you. As in uh, with restricted resources available in the lockdown period, mm -hmm. how do you propose or how do you plan for a distribution uh, plan? How do you propose a distribution cycle? See, as we have uh, already tell it, like we are going to open, uh, we have opened 10,000 uh, new digital stores where like you can order online and we can provide the delivery. So uh, we have, either you can come up, come to the store and uh, like you have, you can collect whatever you have ordered online. So uh, 
this would be member member kind of chains so where like you, you have to take a membership and you can buy from them so uh, like this would be a great logistic uh, for the social distancing thing also and uh, this would be better for like in inventories we don't have to store much inventory in each store so like we can uh, just provide the thing whatever are required by customer in their orders um uh, mr swarnalal yeah so do you have any questions for our panel today yes uh, like i have a question to mr jaswal like uh, mm -hmm. he, he has said that the economy uh, will be norm, in normal situation like my question is to you that how you are uh, that much sure that uh, economy will be in, in normal like uh, don't you think that there, there will be a uh, new india where the safety is most crucial, uh, crucial thing the uh, okay um, i agree with you uh, i want to take you to the gift uh, base when the demonetization occurs occur in india we during the demonetization for for the two three days uh, we uh, we were, uh, also our hands were shifted only we are having having the certain limit of the expenditure in that so in that time also we suffered the same issue that we were not able to, not able allowed to increase more and more and our hands were shifted but uh, in now it was the same that we are only spending our money on the dark amount of thing that which which are needed needed for us now uh, for the second point i want to say you that when our uh, on the when our the prime minister minister modi announced the second uh, second uh, lockdown uh, announced the end of the second starting the of the second phase of lockdown we can see that there was a sense of rise in that day at, uh, it was around adding a value of 4.7 lakh crore to the investor wealth so uh, we, we can see this uh, by taking this as a positive approach we can i can say that uh, it's going to be uh, going to be improve improve for sure in the in coming years to come i mean they should come and also there are several, several other data like on 20 on 26 march we can see that there was a, a government announced that our atmanirbhar bharat scheme uh, atmanirbhar bharat scheme that as a result for the for implement of our budding entrepreneurs and since since will be once we are stabilized to putting up putting our, ourselves on local economy local niche product then it's something uh, then all the all the money and gdp is going to change to our economy only not for the other not going to the other countries uh so i think it's going to be in two groups here thank you sir so i i think we have a question for mr mr ajay kumar mr ajay kumar yes sir yes i would like to ask this question for florence uh, at one point uh, shreya said that the basket size of uh, products were decreased and another point uh, shrikan said that the uh, the people who are using the comfort products like deodorants this are they will be decreasing the usage of it. Uh, if you increase the cost will people use the same way or if you don't increase the cost will it affect the revenue of the company uh well uh, you are asking about the consumerism or minimalism right so if we uh, if we can say uh, if we could see uh, in india many people are there who are uh, uh, who are very stopping freaking they can uh, they always want to shop more but uh, uh, but uh, they use less they want to shop more but they use less if uh, uh, many girls many girls no, not only girls many boys are also um, uh, try to shop more and more but they only uh, but they wear only one once and they never to, uh, touch that uh, clothes after that but if we invest that uh, that uh, amount in uh, uh, in uh, behind the product which we exactly need which we uh, which we really need and uh, which will uh, get some benefit uh, which uh, from which will get some benefit then it will uh, obviously benefit to us or even more for the company uh, well i would like to add a perspective like uh, we as a marketer should not uh, like focus on increasing the price of the necessary product see uh, the situation has arise where like uh, people are, the hands are whole like people cannot do they have not in sufficient earning so they are whatever they required is their necessity nowadays so 
I think uh, we as a marketer should uh, try to reduce the cost. Not if not, it can't reduce the cost, we should not increase it because uh, like it will impact the pupils' uh, living a lot. So I would like to add a point. Like if you increase the price on some organic or hygienic product, you, you may to succeed. Even though there will be having a lot of competition for hygienic and organic products, but increasing uh, price on the deodorant uh, is not a good option. Um, because people will definitely give the preference to the hygienic and organic products, but, but if you increase uh, the price of the uh, deodorant, uh, if you have an, a good brand attachment uh, with your customers, you may succeed. But I think there are very, very narrow chances, uh, so it's not a good option. I think. And also, people can go for the uh, alternative option, which uh, they can get yes, exactly. with a less amount. Yes. Do we have any other questions from our audience? Uh, yes, yes, I have a question. Yes, please. To Kishor Biani, like uh, you have said that uh, retail should adopt new values. Like I wanted to ask you, like uh, what are the uh, values that should be adopted by retail, like specific? Mr. Mr. Fatta? Okay. So we talk about values. So values in in sense of uh, delivering the services, not only the product but the delivering the services. So like uh, previously, people used to uh, come to the stores and they used to buy. As a retailer, now the things have changed. So we we need to form new values. And when I say new new values, I mean to say that uh, I should focus on delivery perspective, the delivery of the product to their home, to, to their doorstep. Secondly, uh, the second value could be that. Uh, now I'm also launching my uh, private brands, like my own brands. So, which could be obviously I have I have my own laboratory. The laboratory in the sense, uh, big bus, uh, big bazaar is a kind of laboratory for me. I can like launch my product and see what how it is working. So, uh, yes, I would come with come up with the products uh, with a, in this scenario, people are uh, is not having enough savings, enough money. So I would uh, focus on. Uh, like cheaper products which ha which can provide a uh, better value so and we can also like focus on uh, providing it to the doorstep so currently we are not much focusing on the balance sheet but we are more fo focusing on uh, i would uh, i would like to add a point like as uh, my friend kishore said uh, for us as a retailers uh, the values uh, in the present scenario is like safety uh, and the delivery uh, not not only delivery, delivering with safety. I would say like uh, when we're delivering a product, uh, let's say, let, let me put it like this. Uh, when people are ordering a product from Walmart uh, in online and coming and collecting in the, in the brick and mortar, uh, then we're keeping, we're thinking, uh, we, we are keeping a uh, feedback uh, of the delivery. How you felt, how, how are the premises? Are we, uh, we wanted to know them. We wanted to know how, uh, uh, we wanted to know how they are feeling about the safety and all. Uh, if they are con if they are convinced, then they would come again because safety is the most essential right now. Yeah. And uh, one more point, like uh, you talk about the values which already started. Even I observed uh, so many food delivery items and uh, retail uh, retail people also. Once they are delivering the item, they are uh, giving one small shots of sanitizer along with the products, yeah, whatever yeah. you order, you know. So that yes. is that is something value like customer can relate with your cust kind of emotional attachment you can pop up with the customers like very few people will do that giving sanitizer it will indirectly says that we care for you in the okay. same way we also did the delivery in a very sanitizer in a very hygienic way in the same way we are also caring for you so this is this is how we have to create the values so just you know cashing the things at this time of covid you know it it may give some temporary revenue but on the long term definitely people will. Uh, remember what company did for the consumer, especially at this point of time. Um, do we have any other questions from our audience? Well, I think as all good things come to an end, our session today comes to an end too. I would like to thank all our panelists for being a part of our discussion. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Vishali Agarwal and all our studio yes. audience making an insightful session of Prodigy Talks. Thank you. I would like to end our talk by saying to all our viewers that this too shall pass. 
stay home stay safe thank you okay so